I just wanted to share with you that help apheresis is still working very well for uh, long COVID patients, that we could be treating also patients who are real, real long holers infected in February or March last year, that they were improving in their pulmonary cardiologic and neurologic symptoms and they need up to eight treatments in the very severe cases. Meanwhile, we had also seen uh, three patients with kinds of relapses, but the waste majority is just getting better. And it's a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Beat Yeager, who is highly regarded medical doctor in cardiology, and she's leading helpathoresis therapy in Germany. So Dr. Yeager is an author of a significant number of world-leading medical papers on atheresis for over 30 years. Dr. Yeager saved many lives throughout her career and is continuing to do so. So Dr. Yeager, thank you very much for being with us. And it's a, such a great honor to have you on our channel. The pleasure is mine. And I would like to congratulate you, dear Valentina and Alexei, for investing so much per personal effort to make your wonderful Long COVID Foundation. And I hope you get all uh, support from from the whole world is my wish. Thank you very much. Likewise, I'm delighted to have Professor Ancha Baranova this evening, who is a professor at School of Systems Biology and Director of Chronic and Metabolic and Rare Diseases, George Mason University. Welcome to our podcast. Thank you, Valentina. Nice to see you again. <laughs> So today we have very exciting topic to discuss. So many of our listeners are waiting to hear about the work that Dr. Yeager has pioneered. But before we will go into details, I'd like to remind that coronavirus can have prolonged symptoms. And this syndrome is called long COVID. Long COVID is seen in 30% of people. The symptoms are so diverse that doctors struggle to identify the real source. So many people 12 months post viral infection still experience symptoms. They have developed organ damage and the reason could be reduced microcirculation due to the inflammation. And it's important task to provide the tissue and cells with energy nutrients and find ways to transport metabolic residues away. The inflammatory substances and coagulation factors that occur during the infection in increased amounts in the blood and from the apheresis are almost completely filtered out. So there are doctors who want to help those affected with long COVID and using help apheresis therapy. Clinical practice related to help of reasons, I have to mention for long COVID sufferers, is still very limited. Dr. Yeager is pioneering this therapy in her private clinic in Germany. So Dr. Yeager, could you please outline your general medical expertise and share your story, how you decided to treat long COVID with help of reasons? Yes, of course. <clears throat> We were reading all the reports from Wuhan in China, and I had the privilege to study together with uh, students and doctorants from, from uh, Wuhan and also from Beijing. And I was first considering their fate, and, and I uh, uh, could early see that this would become a worldwide problem. So we were trying to get informed better. And I was discussing it was the inventor of um, the help apheresis, my former boss and director of Munich University, uh, Professor Dietrich Seidel. And then we got aware uh, of uh, the work of Professor Varga in Zurich and also other pathologic reports who showed us that, long, that COVID means an inflammation of the inner wall of the arteries in the whole body, not only in the 
pulmonaries, but also in other organs. And this resembles to large extent to the disease process of ather atherosclerosis. And so as we made good experiences in this field with the help apheresis, it was close to think to try it in, in COVID. Actually, last year I had no chance to implement it on an ICU. I tried to uh, <laughs> move all what I can, but uh, it did not work out. And then the children of patients of my clinic got long COVID, and they were the first I have been treating since February this year. This is amazing. And could you tell a little bit more about HELP itself, what it is and how it differs from other types of apheresis? Yes, HELP is an abbreviation for heparin mediated extracorporal LDL precipitation. It's a precipitation method using heparin to precipitate lipoproteins clotting factors, but also cytokines, C-reactive protein and other stuff. And the device contains adsorber system for the heparin, which is capable of removing viral and bacterial toxins in use for 36 years, safe, many hundred thousand times used. So, Anche, could you give us a little bit more scientific background into help apheresis uh, itself? Is there somehow heparin involved into it? What does it do for people that people become healthier or their symptoms improve? Well, I uh, am a scientist. I'm not a physician. Dr. Yeager here is a physician, so uh, I will let her to correct me in my understanding if I am not exactly correct. But in my understanding, the help of is different from typical plasma pheresis in the carrier, which is used uh, for absorbance of various active substances. In case of help, the major absorbent is heparin. So heparin, which is caged within the apparatus, is used to attract substances which are having natural affinity to the heparin and withdraw them from the blood. Also, heparin, it's a very large polymer. So it has multiple affinities due to its uh, large structure. It has multiple affinities. So we're not expecting that only one particular molecule binds to it, or two or 10. It might be dozens and maybe many dozens of various kinds of molecules. And I couldn't say that it is uh, studied in complete spectrum of those molecules. We know about some, and we know about some new ones which showed up just recently. There was a paper published just incidentally recently uh, about ability of uh, the S protein of coronavirus to bind to heparin. So one may say that maybe this heparin-based treatment help us to remove S protein from circulation. But there are other things which would be good if they would be removed along with S protein. I'm not saying that uh, uh, six months uh, after coronavirus infection, patients are still having huge amount of S protein, maybe some residuals, but that's a relatively small amount. But still, there is something wrong with the bodies of those patients. And where exactly the activation of something nasty happens, those are blood vessels and endothelial cells. And we know from quite some time, experiments done quite some time ago, that heparin able to actively interfere with interferon gamma activation, particularly in the endothelial sites. And this is a very... Uh, intricate game between heparin, which is naturally found in our blood, and it can adhere itself to the surface of the cells on the outside, like blood vessels, and the population of heparin molecules, which are present in the free-floating form. Only in case of help apparatus, this free-floating form is free-floating but caged. So it is remained within the apparatus, right? It was shown in some papers 
that the presence of this free heparin is helping to suppress interferon gamma activation on the surface of endothelial cells. So one may say that help uh, use uh, is generally down-regulated interferon gamma-related inflammation right there within the vessels. The second most important protein here is uh, the MCP1 protein, which is very, very important cytokine. It is specifically related to the function of monocytes. And the monocytes are very important cells. We know that the uh, COVID virus can infect uh, monocytes. And even if there is no virus anymore, the monocytes are remaining activated. We know right now that uh, the virus cannot multiplicate, replicate within the monocytes. But still, it sits there for a very long time, and that is constantly supporting the activation of monocytes and their nasty action upon our own blood vessels. And suppression of the natural activation of monocytes by help certainly would add an extra point uh, uh, to the uh, process of uh, patients getting better. It relates very well, and it's the first uh, symptom to react. Patients us usually say already during their first apheresis treatment, I can breathe much better and deeper. And we have seen a patient with a full stage of uh, COVID pneumonia and four apheresis treatments make, made his lungs in the CT look much better and his oxygen uh, saturation steadily increased from very low levels to uh, much better levels with every treatment more onset. So I'm very optimistic about the symptoms of shortness of breath. I did not see among all the 60 patients one who had no improvement in shortness of breath and also in myocarditis symptoms. 